Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, our question comes from Randy. He is KF4RJH. He says, thanks for your videos. They've been so helpful. However, I'm still unable to find an answer to my new unique situation. I live in the mountains of Western North Carolina. It's a beautiful area, by the way. On the ground floor of a two-story apartment building with antenna restrictions. Can I run the feed in the corner up to the ceiling and have my dipole pointing south and east rather than in a straight line? Uh, if so, living in North Carolina, would southeast be better or northwest? Will it matter which end points in which direction? Is horizontal okay or is some degree of uh, an inverted B better? Inverted B better. David, I know you're busy, so I hope you can reply. All right. So um, before we jump into answering this question, I'd like to say a special thank you to David Moulter, who is one of my most recent new patrons on Patreon.com. You too can help support this channel by going to Patreon.com slash KE0OG and looking for a way that works for you. Now, let's take a look at these questions. Uh, he's talking about building an indoor antenna by taping an antenna uh, or push pin or whatever uh, to the wall of the antenna. Uh, this is a severe compromise antenna, a severe compromise. Um, your signal is going to be attenuated quite a bit. Also, you're going to put what's on the other side of that wall, namely your neighbor, in a fairly high RFI situation. It won't be dangerous if you're just using 100 watts, but it may very well be too much for his or her television. Um, I guess people don't use stereos anymore these days. Um, computer equipment, Wi-Fi, and so on and so forth. So you might be creating an RFI problem, not only for yourself, but for your neighbor and the neighbors upstairs. Uh, I have tried this. I used to live in a second story apartment and I rigged up a 20 meter dipole inside the apartment. And although it did work, the, it worked very poorly. So let's answer your question. And then I want to explore a couple alternatives with you. You've got your apartment walls looking like this. Okay, you're standing inside. And you've got maybe a window or a door or a book bookcase or whatever. Now, the first one he asks about is an antenna that looks like this along the wall. And uh, I doubt he'd be able to do, well, maybe he can get 15 feet out of it. But I think we're talking um, at max 20 meters. And we bring the cable down here and then bring the other one like this. So looking from the top, it's fed like that, fed in here, this and this. Will this kind of an antenna arrangement work? Yes, it will work. Okay, now it's going to have radiation spread out here and some smaller in here. It will tend to be directional in that direction. Okay, if, if this is a dipole length, if this is multi multi wavelengths, it's going to actually be more directional this way, or at least along that axis. Okay, so that's the one opportunity, uh, one possibility. Now, another possibility is some sort of an inverted V like this, again, with this running down to your feed line to wherever your antenna is. Uh, you'll have the same issues. If It kind of depends on what the building is made of. I'm thinking in the mountains of North Carolina, you're not in a big city, so probably you're in an area where the wall is wood, okay, 
Now there's electrical wires and stuff running through the wall, which will tend to pick up some of what you see here. So don't be surprised if the lights flicker. Um, it possibly, since you're on the first floor, it might be made of brick. Brick or cast concrete, with the floor above it being wood. If that is the case, your chances of getting out of there are pretty slim to none. Now, does it cost very much money to try this? No. It's very inexpensive antenna. You need some sort of an insulator, but if you live in rural uh, uh, North Carolina, go to some farm and country store like uh, Murdoch's or uh, there's another one up in Delta, I'm trying to remember. But get an electric fence insulators okay you you can buy them like in a package of six for a couple bucks okay use that for your center insulator you can use it down here at the corners too okay and then you put your so239 there or just solder your cable directly to that or if you want you can put a ballon in there but right now you're trying to discover if the concept works now, okay, so I think I've answered your basic questions. Can I run the feed in the corner up to the ceiling and have my dipole point north and south rather than a straight line? Yes. If living in North Carolina, which would be better? Uh, try it and see. Uh, I have, have a feeling they'd be about the same. Will it matter which end points in what direction? No. Is uh, horizontal okay? Yes, that's fine. Some degree of an inverted be better. Sure. Another thing you can do, I'll just draw those walls again. Okay. Is bring it along here till you run out of room and then just dangle it like this and dangle it like this. This will give you more effective room um, this again is a compromise antenna and the problem with being an interior antenna with uh, on the bottom floor of a multi-story building is uh, considerable uh, dampening of the signal um, that will cause the signal strength to go down okay will it matter that C is horizontal okay now you can get yourself, I'm assuming you have a door that leads out the back of your apartment. Uh, and out there, there's some grass or something. Okay, what you need to do is uh, get something like call MFJ. There's a mount that will connect two uh, hamsticks um, end to end. Okay, and you can create a dipole out of that. And it's portable, so you can pick it up, put it out there when you're operating, bring it back in when you're not. Another uh, option for doing that sort of thing is a buddy pole. You'll spend a lot more money on the buddy pole. The buddy pole can operate on different bands, but you have to move jumpers uh, to do that. I've got a buddy pole that does work. Uh, they seem to enjoy a Vogue a few years ago. They're still around. Another thing that you can do is a Magloop antenna. Now, if all you need is a little table out in your, on your back porch uh, where you can set this thing, okay, and you want to set it so one end is looping out. That way you get most of your coverage that way. Uh, or if you can move that little table out into the yard, you can have it pointed and you get three-quarter coverage uh, in there with that. And uh, they work quite well. Now, they are compromised antennas, but what is compromised is not performance, but rather bandwidth. So be sure you get the one that has the tuner that goes with it and so on. MFJ sells them. Um, lots of chameleon sells a real strong one. There are lots of these out there that you can get. They're fairly expensive. But nobody looking at it will know what it is. And um, 
you can put it out there and it, it's they're not very big they're about three feet in diameter okay set it out on a table or just leave it on your balcony with uh, one of the round heads jutting out and uh, you can just leave it there and nobody will know it's an antenna if uh, it seems that people are questioning it do what one person did that I know of hang a bird cage from the middle of it or a little bird feeder there that the birds can come eat that will not affect the performance of your antenna so you do have options but I really urge you to figure out a way to move outside okay um, as best you can so there you have it I hope something in there was helpful to you a lot of people are in your situation uh, your indoor antenna will work, though it will be a compromised antenna, and signal strengths will be greatly attenuated. Plus, you're just asking for RFI problems when you put an antenna that close to where you and other people live. So, there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you can do so by going to decastlercom support and picking a way that works for you. Uh, the way I'm kind of... Uh, uh, suggesting to people right now is via the tip jar. Just throw any amount that you want into the tip jar. This goes through PayPal. They take their usual 7% uh, out of it, which is normal for a payment processor. The nice thing about PayPal is I don't have to pay them a monthly fee or anything like that, and yet they still act as a full-featured payment processor. And they're the ones who deal with your credit card. I never see your credit card information. I don't want to see your credit card information. Somebody sent me a letter with their Visa card number saying, you know, please do this. And I'm going, I have no way of processing a Visa card. So you have to go in through PayPal, put it in there, and it'll work just fine for you. So until we next meet, 73.